Long story ahead. I've been with my husband for 28 years and married for 21 years. Together we had been through a lot. We were broke and had two jobs to support each other. We have survived poverty, unemployment, death of a family together. I've supported him when he was building his business. I had to sell some of my jewelry I got from my mom just so I could get his business started. He promised me he would make our lives easy, and he kept that promise. I'm sure anyone would think that we would last for a long time, but that wasn't the case. After being married for 20 plus years and having two kids, 27 male and 23 female, I discovered my husband was having an affair with the niece of his colleague. I was devastated. I asked him and confronted him, and he said he doesn't feel attracted to me, and I did not have the same appeal, and his new mistress makes him feel alive and young. It was hard for me to hear the nonsense he was speaking. I wanted to work on our marriage, but I knew if I stayed married to him for another 20 years, I would probably lose my sanity. Seven years ago, I filed for divorce. My youngest was 16 at that time. She wanted to leave with me, but being a housewife for 15 years, I did not have any experience in the working field. So I told her to stay with her dad for now. I lived in a small one-bedroom apartment. I did get alimony, but it looked like dirty money to me because I would have to look at his name. As for my kids, my son refuses to speak to his dad after the divorce. My daughter also went low contact with him. I took this time to build myself. I got a job with the help of a friend. I'm now in a comfortable position. I realized how much freedom I have now. So I tried to make my life a bit better every day. I had my kids with me and my family. I didn't need much. I didn't even think about dating until three years ago when I ran into Ricky, 59 male. Ricky was close to my husband and was his business partner at one point. He moved to France 15 years ago and just came to our country. Ricky and I were also close. He is also a single dad, but his wife had died. When he approached me, I was not that interested. He told me that he always had a thing for me, but he kept his boundaries because I was married. I decided to give dating a try. I felt confident whenever I'm with Ricky. I haven't had this feeling for a long time. Ricky and I didn't just like each other. We also desired and loved each other. A year ago, we moved into the same house. Our kids were okay with us, but the problem was with my ex. When he learned I was with Ricky, he tried to blame me for our problems in marriage. He started telling people I had an affair with Ricky, which is absurd because Ricky was not in the country for a long time. It didn't work, but he didn't give up. Ricky and my ex were part of the same club. When Ricky rejoined after coming back, he reconnected with his old friends, including my ex. My ex made some harsh comments about me being old and used. Ricky shut those down by saying he was being disrespectful to the mother of his children. Two years ago, the club organized a fundraiser and Ricky took me there as his date. Ricky was introducing me to people and showing me around. My ex was also there with his mistress. I could tell he was pissed when he saw me. At that party, he forcefully held my hand and told me to drop the act. He knows I'm only doing this to hurt him. I was very ashamed. Thankfully, Ricky saved me. I thought this would stop, but my ex was messaging me saying he was sorry and he misses me. He thought that we would grow old together and die together. But I had to remind him that it was he who destroyed that future, and my future doesn't have a place for him. He even tried to coerce my kids into talking me out of dating Ricky, but my kids gave him a dose of reality. A few months ago, his mistress, Kathy, called me to warn me if I don't leave my ex alone, she will destroy my life. I blocked her because I do not have time for her BS. I never thought she would stoop so low. She went into my social media with a fake account and started posting mean comments. I block her, but it's no use. So I kept my social media private for now. She even got some of her friends to harass me. I don't know what to do. It is getting out of hand. She keeps spreading rumors about me that I slept with every man in that club. She even tried to flirt with Ricky, but it was a fail because Ricky finds it disgusting that someone his daughter's age would be so gross around him. I'm at a loss. I blocked her. I ignored her, but nothing works. Talk with a lawyer. A strongly worded letter may be enough. A restraining order will be on the record and is a much stronger measure if still needed. Regarding this, the overall picture I get is that you have won. Your kids have rightfully stuck by you and lost respect for your ex. You are no longer stuck taking care of a selfish cheater. You have a partner who loves and appreciates you. And the most delicious icing on the cake is that now, not only is your ex regretful and jealous, but his new girlfriend is totally insane. This is all good news for you. Keep a record of the harassment. 
buy a lot of security cameras and a security system, and then don't worry about it. She is just full of steam. Tell Ricky that as the club member, he needs to stay on top of debunking rumors and gossip. You've been through enough. Oh, no. You mean you didn't sit around wallowing in the loss of God's gift to women? I guess marrying your gold digger isn't all it's cracked up to be. Imagine being your ex thinking you've left for greener pastures, but don't realize that field you left is about to ducking flourish with all the BS you left behind. Edit. I have collected the evidence and going to speak to my lawyer to get a restraining order. For now, I hardly think it will be granted because most of her harassment was verbal, nothing physical. She hasn't been on my property. I did, however, write a complaint to the club manager. Ricky also pushed this matter to the manager. He wants her to be banned from the club. I, 34 female, work with my mother-in-law. Her daughter, sister-in-law, and grandchild were coming to town for the weekend. We got to talking in the parking lot after work, and I suggested everyone come to my house for BLTs the next day. It is worth noting in our planning conversation, I said we really need to get rid of a bunch of stuff in our fridge because it needed to be eaten before it goes bad and settled on BLTs, since we had most everything and they love them. Mother-in-law asks if she needs to bring anything. We went over all the ingredients, and I specifically said we have a full loaf of bread, a head of lettuce, bacon, mayo. The only thing I didn't have were tomatoes, because I don't like them and they grow them. We confirmed the time and reiterated that she only needs to bring the tomatoes. Husband's family is notoriously 15 minutes early. When they were 15 minutes late, I asked my husband to call them to make sure we had the right time. I wanted to make sure everything was hot and ready to go. Mother-in-law said she was running late because she was still cooking bacon. I was angry and told him they only needed to bring tomatoes and that I already made bacon. Mother-in-law said you can never have too much bacon. I tried to keep my cool and continued getting the toast ready to pop in the oven. An hour later, husband's family shows up with five grocery bags full of everything you could possibly need. Mayo, Miracle Whip, two more heads of lettuce, two loaves of bread, two packages of cooked bacon, and three unsliced tomatoes. Unsliced is no big deal, but if it was the only thing you were supposed to bring, I mean, it wouldn't have hurt. I was beyond upset. My favorite thing in the world is hosting, and I had everything prepared and displayed nicely. I not only spent a few hours setting everything up, but also making gourmet sauces and sides. I had to spend the additional hour they were late, keeping everything warm or cold as needed. When they marched into my kitchen and set all the bags down, I uncontrollably started crying, saying how rude it was to bring the meal I just made. You would never bring a cooked turkey to Thanksgiving if the host wasn't expecting it. It's rude. I went to our shed and cried. My husband came out 20 minutes later and asked if I would come back inside and apologize to my mother-in-law for making her feel bad. I said that is ridiculous and she was in the wrong. I eventually came back inside, made a strawberry and provolone grilled cheese because I didn't even like BLTs. They were a favorite of his family and ate in my room. I refuse to apologize and my husband is on my mother-in-law's side. We refer to it as BLT gate and I'm resentful of him for not having a conversation with his mom about how inappropriate it was. By the way, there is no way his mother misunderstood or forgot the details of our planning conversation. Am I the a-hole? Edit to clarify and answer some questions. I was crying because they were an hour late, making a lunch we agreed I would prepare. I thought it was more appropriate to not cry in front of everyone, which is why I went to the shed. Only four people were eating the BLTs. The niece only eats mac and cheese, so I made that, and I do not eat bacon, so I planned a different sandwich and had extra add-ons everyone would enjoy. I put a lot of effort in trying to make lunch special. Would I be justified if it wasn't a simple BLT? If it was cordon bleu or lasagna, would it make a difference? Not the a-hole. Your mother-in-law was incredibly rude, and I'm a little surprised at your husband. I feel like there's something I'm missing here. Not the a-hole. I think people are forgetting that you made a plan and she knew it. You spent your time making up the stuff and making extra sides, and she went behind your back and brought food knowing she didn't need to, and they probably didn't touch your guy's food because it would be rude to make her take home all the food she prepped and made. Not the a-hole. Is he always on his mother's side? I would, however, have a conversation with him. Why are your mother's feelings so much more important right now than mine? Would you side with me if I really did bring turkey to your mother's house on Thanksgiving? If he can't see what he and she did was wrong, you might be married to a mama's boy, 
and if that's the case, run. This is not about BLTs. Do not let him reduce this to that. This is about respect. My husband's high school friend got married later in life, and we wives, four of us, took a girl's trip to the beach. Over some wine, friend's wife said to me, You know, I would be more suited for your husband, and you for mine. On return from the beach, my husband is at the house with her husband, and she walks up, kisses my husband on the mouth, and gives him a lengthy hug. At our friend's weekend parties, she corners my husband, asking him for his help on this or that. Months later, while we're entertaining at our house, she walks into our kitchen saying, What I could do with a kitchen like this? I would have made so much more. Getting a bit tipsy, we all go downstairs to watch my girls do a dance performance, and she yells out, Where's my, insert my husband's name? Again, she kisses him on the mouth as she leaves for the night. With just her husband and mine left at the party, I said, Listen, some of your wife's behavior is making us feel uncomfortable. He got defensive, saying she kisses everyone on the mouth, and my husband just kind of sat there. Ugh. Later, husband's friend says to my husband that we shouldn't get together. In other words, husband's friend blacklisted us from all future events. Five years pass, and now husband's friend is inviting us to events again. No surprise, wife is still crossing boundaries. She walks right up to my husband and kisses him, asks him to carry things for her, tries anything to get my husband's attention. My husband generally ignores her, but it's really uncomfortable. Others notice. She shouts out at the ballpark, Where's my golf partner? Strong man. My, insert my husband's name. She doesn't play golf. Husband asked that we go to her surprise 60th party. We went. Husband asked that we go to his friend's 60th. We went. We've tried to navigate these events while ignoring her, and my husband wants to see his friend. But any events that she's at creates complete chaos in our relationship. Last night, husband's friend asked him if he wanted to go to a showcase for the high school senior softball team, and I said I will not go with the wife there. I knew she'd be there, and I really didn't want him going solo either. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole, but half your problem here is your husband. She's being inappropriate, and not once does it seem like he said anything to her. Why does he just let her kiss him? And let that moment go unchecked. Why isn't he snapping at her, asking who she thinks she is? Why isn't he holding your feelings in higher regard? She's completely in the wrong, that's for sure. I wouldn't trust her alone with him. I know it takes two to tango, but as long as your husband doesn't say something or try to put distance between him and her, that wouldn't reassure me. Not the a-hole, but your husband needs to be the one to put a stop to this. He needs to put his foot down and tell her she's acting inappropriate and needs to stop. In other words, you have more of a husband problem here than anything else. Info. Why is your husband allowing this woman to kiss him on multiple occasions? Your husband is the a-hole for not putting a stop to this. He could easily put his hands out and tell her to step away, but he's choosing to let her kiss him and be affectionate. This isn't solely on the woman. It's also on your husband. He's not blameless in this situation. Thanks for this. My husband has turned his head or backed away on occasion but he's not saying anything to discourage her. My prior thought was that if he can't be confrontational and can't avoid her, is that we don't go to events where she will be. However, that's keeping us from events he wants to be at, or I go and we stay on the opposite side of the room, completely uncomfortable. You're absolutely right. The only way to resolve this is for him to react to her or say to her in a way that tells her, in no uncertain terms, that it's not okay. At the start of this year, I, 29 female, was stalked and harassed by a woman who believed that I was having an affair with her husband. It was over a month of daily harassment over phone, on social media, and at times even in public. She even threw a stone through my window and vandalized my car in my driveway. She was caught on security camera and charges were brought against her. I had to spend a lot on lawyers to threaten legal suits against both the husband and wife to get her to back off. She was having some sort of mental breakdown and went into a psych hold. Her meds helped and she agreed to stop and accepted that I wasn't the involved party. As part of our legal agreement, she made social media posts apologizing and clearing my name and some financial recompense for damages caused. During all this, my fiancé, 32 male, was of no help at all. We lived together and he wouldn't do anything to support me. When I got accosted in public places, he'd simply leave. 
When our condo was attacked, he got in his car and left to stay with a friend. He said it was too embarrassing for him to stay around. He didn't seem to realize that I was scared and felt my life was in danger. He knew that I was innocent in this, and yet he didn't stop his friends and family from believing the worst about me and making snide remarks at me. I begged him to help me, and he'd act frustrated as if there was nothing he could do here. When the woman harassing me made the apology posts, I forwarded them everywhere, explaining how I got caught up in someone else's tragedy, and I called my fiancé a coward for his behavior, which was also my way of publicly breaking up with him. My parents were very supportive of me throughout this mess, and they gave me money for the lawyer's retainer. But they didn't like my public F you to my ex. They said that it was petty of me and asked me to be nicer and not break up. I did eventually move his name from my posts, but I was not interested in any relationship with him anymore. After this all went away, I was still pretty traumatized and paranoid. I quit my job and couldn't stand living with my ex. My best friend lived a few states away, and she invited me to stay with her as a change of scenery. It was the break I needed. I also found a great job there while I was visiting and decided to settle there. I've been living in this town since then. I've booked two tickets to visit my family for Christmas, and last night my mother told me that my ex is staying with them as a house guest. My mother said he wasn't doing too well after I left, and my parents let him move in with them. I don't want to see my ex, and I am pretty hurt that my parents are taking care of this man who did not stand by me. Would I be the a-hole if I tell my parents I'm not visiting as long as he's in their home? Not the a-hole. Almost a guaranteed ploy to try to get you two back together. Also, who just lets their daughter's ex move in? Absolutely not the a-hole. What the duck are your parents thinking? Do they love your ex more than they love you? Let them know your boundaries, and if they can't respect them, then that's their loss and choice. Again, I'm seriously so sorry they did this to you. Personal story. Me and my mom are friendly with my sister's exes because she has children with them. If there was no long-term commitment in the relationship, they have no ties to that person and should be loyal to their child. And my mother would absolutely never let one of them move in. She'd try to help them find a place or something, but never bringing them into my sister's space. Not the a-hole. He left you all alone when you were getting harassed and still didn't think that he would be dumped? The audacity. Your parents are being a-holes here. Tell them you won't be visiting if your ex is there. Just let them choose between you and your ex. They shouldn't be supporting a man who left their daughter all alone when she was being attacked.